How many of y'all needed that? Whew. Glory. I love God's presence. <sighs> Thank you, Master. Would you turn to 1 Corinthians 6, please? First Corinthians six. How's everybody tonight? Plus and highly flavored. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And verse 12, please. Is everybody there? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. Let's speak it. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are law for, for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. What he's warning us about is harmful desires. Everyone say harmful desire. Just because it might not be sin, but it can lead to sin. See, when you're not honest with yourself, you can't be honest with God. Everything is about honesty. What you neglect in honesty today will creep up on you and take you out and let us put under the blood in repentance. Because the opposite of honesty is lying. Amen? And lying is an open door to the enemy. Lying is a harmful desire. Does everybody get it? Amen. Lying does nothing but protect self because it protects pride and then pride protects self. Lying. It is so deadly and dangerous and it is a harmful desire. It must be brought to the surface quickly, repented on. So it can be cleansed and the Spirit can have access to you again. I remember, anywhere that there's not the blood, the Holy Spirit can't access. Amen? Let's go a little further. He said, foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. That means if you're a Democrat, you're in trouble. Because you're members of a harlot. The Democratic Party is the Babylonian harlotry. feeds on the death of unborn children, on their blood. Every one of them is going to hell unless they repent. That's pretty shrewd, isn't it? But this is called reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 16, Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that you are the body of the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought. Everyone say, I was bought. 
with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Again, under the power of anything, he says, I will not be brought under the power of anything. Again, these are, it is, in other words, he's saying this is dangerous. It's a place where an individual loses control. People can become used as a puppet. They're exchanging their members of righteousness, a place and position of Christ in the temple for unrighteousness. He is warning us that these are called harmful desires. Amen? And Genesis 3. See, many times people don't realize that just because a manifestation of something harmful didn't come immediately doesn't mean it's not coming. Harmful desires. Genesis 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Of course, we know he's trying to get her to reason. What's the other thing he's trying to do? He's kind of trying to impart in her a what? Harmful desire. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now we know that these were not just trees. Amen? These were presents of spirits. Does everybody understand that? The Word of God tells us that you will know them by their fruit. Amen? Every good tree bears what? Good fruit. What did the tree represent? A spirit. I can't imagine the garden of God just being filled with wood trees. Come on. It's God Almighty. And you got to remember something else, that Adam was in charge. And the angels were serving under him. Hello? Hello? Even the serpent had to serve under Adam. Lucifer had to serve under Adam. Adam didn't like that. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. We don't know what the serpent was doing then. He could have been digging ditches. <laughs> Who knows? But he was serving Adam. Adam was now in charge of everything in the garden. We don't know how big the garden was. Can you imagine the angels that had fallen were under Adam? That's why serpent was in the garden. What does he say in verse 5? For God knows that in the day you eat of, of it, your tree, your eyes will be open. And you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. And a woman, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and tree desirable will make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate, and they both blew it. But they did not eat from a tree. We know that this whole event that occurred was a sexual event. The serpent impregnated Eve, and she produced Abel and Cain. And if you go down in the scriptures, then it says that the only son of Adam was known as Seth. So we know that the woman, Eve, was born righteous. Amen? So she had a righteous son and a wicked one. And the word always confirms himself. Anybody recall when the Lord said that there would be 
and a woman, two nations, and who was that? Jacob and Esau. So the word always confirms himself. So in this, you understand that the serpent was trying to create a harmful desire so that she would be, Eve would be desiring him. Does everybody get this? Why? Because he's the master of lust. The serpent was creating a harmful desire, which is temptation. Isn't that what temptation is? Every harmful desire is influenced by evil. Every desire has an influence. Behind, be, uh, in other words, every desire has an influence from it. So before the desire comes, there must be an influence that is promoting it. Every influence has a motive. And every motive has a presence. So we got a presence, we got a motive, we got an influence that's trying to get a harmful desire to me and you. I'll say that again. There's a presence. Where there's a presence, there's a motive. Where there's a motive, there's an influence. Where there's an influence, there's a desire. When we get in God's presence, he's got a motive for me and you. He loves us. He's trying to get something to us. He's trying to bless us. Amen? His influence is to try and fill us with love, to get us on the right path. And his desire is a good desire, not a harmful one. So the more you're in God's presence, the more you will desire the things of righteousness. Our desire should always be God's presence. Because he loves when we come into his presence. So we okay. James 1. Harmful desires. How many of y'all addiction is a harmful desire? Alcohol, nicotine, all of those things. Pornography, those are harmful desires. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures the temptation and rejects the harmful desire. <laughs> For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. In other words, if he overcomes the temptation. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away. Drawn away. Remember, presence, influence. Influence does what? Draws you away. Amen? Where there's an influence of drawing away, then there's a motive. And that motive is to get to me and you a harmful desire. Because he says here, he is drawn away by his own what? Desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, which is the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. So we know that the end result of a harmful desire will end up in a person being harmed. Could be sick could be whatever it is. You don't know what that harmful end re result will be. But there will be a harmful end result. Drawn away by his, our own desires, provoked to the next level of reaction. That's what the enemy loves to do. He likes to provoke us, push us. <clears throat> In other words, in this... <laughs> The enemy's always trying to fulfill his own motive. You know, what about individuals? Individuals that love to manipulate another individual. Their mo what's their motive? You know, there are motives that you and I can sense. It's called discernment. 
When somebody's talking, you already sense their motive. You know what's going on. You can sense what they're, 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 they're being influenced, what their motive is, and what the harmful desire is. Amen? You can usually sense that before they even discuss what it is. Now, there are those in the area where you and I can see physically harmful desires, but then there's the unseen one, where there's that presence that's unseen, and then there's a presence that is seen in an individual. Amen? What is it doing? To, it's looking to be fulfilled, isn't it? The individual, the purpose of a harmful desire is for the presence of evil to be fulfilled. Because if they can get an individual to react to this harmful desire, it will feed that spirit. Is everybody okay? Go to Genesis 1. Isn't a want a desire? And isn't a desire a want? Amen. Harmful desires. Genesis one twenty six. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created him, so we know the serpent lied. Amen? Because he was trying to entice a harmful desire. And then God blessed them and said, it'll be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion. Have what? Dominion. Dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God is love. God had a desire. What was his desire? Create man in his image. What was his motive? Love. Everything. So grab hold of this. So if we were made in this image and likeness, so man was created with desire. Does everybody get it? Because God had a desire. You and I were created with a desire. So if God created us with a desire, we live by desires. There's a desire in you all the time. But there's a desire to whether to do the things that are pleasing to God, pleasing to self, or pleasing to man. Amen? Amen. There are those areas, so there's always a desire running in you. When you get hungry, you get a desire. But you don't want to desire harmful food. Amen? Amen? When you, so there's a period of time when we get hungry, because the Word talks about being thirsty and hungry for the presence of God. That's a good desire. Amen. But then there the world will try to mislead us with harmful desires and that's what we must be careful of we know right now that there is so much influence going on it is creating many harmful desires guys dressing like girls girls dressing like guys that's a harmful desire heck even god who are you when the person gets to heaven god knows thank god but if they don't know who they are, how are they going to get in? There's no ID. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Go to 1 John 5. First John chapter 5. 
So where there's a healthy desire, there's a healthy motive. Amen? Where there's a righteous desire, there's a righteous motive. There are areas when we are frustrated, angered, tempted, that we may have a, a, a desire, we'll try, uh, 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 an influence, we'll try to promote a harmful desire, but because he is in you is greater than that desire, you overcome it. You don't let it react. You don't let it manifest. 1 John 5.18 Let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked, does not, wicked one doesn't touch him. Now, this is powerful. In other words, he's able to discern the influence of evil presence. Because isn't that what sin is? Sin is the presence of evil. We know that we are born of God born of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one to promote harmful desires. Listen, what do you think murder is? It's a harmful desire. What do you think rape is? It's a harmful desire. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding about this. And that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is a true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols. What's an idol? It's a harmful desire. Oh, snap. Idols are harmful desires. True Christians keep themselves from harmful desires. They understand that the sway of the unseen influence will attempt to attack us with harmful desires, but we must refuse it. We must discern every motive, but you must first discern your motive in decisions that you're making also. 1 Corinthians 15. Is everybody there? In verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Let's speak it together. Do not be what? Do not be what? How is a person deceived? They're deceived by a presence of influence. Amen? said, so don't be deceived. So we must discern what that presence is. What's this influence? Don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts what? Good habits. So is a good habit a harmful one? No. Amen? So what is he talking about? He says, man, be, don't be deceived. Evil company, evil presence promotes Harmful desires. Awake to righteousness and don't sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. That's wild. Evil company, seen or unseen, corrupts good desires. Amen? Romans 7. Romans 7. Hallelujah. In verse 7. Everybody okay? Yeah. Romans 7, 7. Let's speak it. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On contrary, I would not have known sin except for through the law. Was it? This is the law of the Ten Commandments. He said, man, I didn't even know that there was sin until it was brought to me. <laughs> Certainly not. 
On the contrary, I would have not known sin except through the law. For I would have not known covetousness unless it, the law had said, you shall not covet. But sin taken opportunity by the commandment produced in me all manners of what? Evil desires. He realized how many evil desires he had. For apart from the law, sin was dead. I was alive once without the law. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was to bring life, I found to bring death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, just, and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, did I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh. Nothing good dwells. So we got to understand that something in your flesh is nothing but harmful desires. For it, for to will is present with me, but to how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. See, we battle all the time with the old man. If the devil can't get you, the old man will try to. But the, the devil, the powers of doubt, is trying to influence your old man to attack your new man. I find in the law that evil is present with me and the one who wills to do good. For I do what? Verse 22, I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing me, or my thoughts, bringing me into what? Captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So sin is the presence of evil. It's the presence of evil motives that is present in your flesh. Seeking opportunity to promote harmful desires. That's why we must take control of it. That's why the word says, cast down all thoughts and imaginations and all other things that are come against the knowledge of God and make sure that you're obedient to that before you can do it. Colossians 3. Hallelujah. In verse 1, Colossians 3, 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death. Put to death your members that have harmful desires, which are on the earth like fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Remember, idolatry, idols are harmful desires. Because of these things, the what? The wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. 
But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. These are evil desires, or what we call harmful. Do not lie to one another, another harmful desire. Since you have put off the old man, which is known as the flesh, with his deeds, and put on the new man, who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, created you. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ, the power, the anointing, is all and in all. Powerful. Put to death harmful desires, which are works of the flesh. Galatians 5. Whose responsibility to put them to death is? Ours. Galatians chapter 5. But you won't be alert and sensitive if you don't get in God's presence enough. That's where you got to be consistent to enter in. in. Verse 16. I say then what? Walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust, which is a what? desire of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish or you do desire. Amen? But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, the works of harmful desires are Evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is also associated with drugs, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wraths, selfish ambitions, dissensions, her heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's wild. Why? Because the enemy has influenced these individuals that carries a bad, uh, ungodly motive with harmful desires. And now that they're practicing these harmful desires, it is rejecting them from entering the kingdom of God. Is everybody okay? Let's go on. Uh, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such. There's no law. So those are helpful desires, aren't they? And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires, harmful desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit and let us not become conceited, provoking one or envying one another because you'll step right out of the Spirit and kiss a harmful desire. Amen? Walk and live in the Spirit of God, crucifying the flesh with its passion and harmful desires. Again, lack of his fulfilling presence and word will allow people to slip. 1 Corinthians 6. First Corinthians chapter six. And verse nine. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? How do they become unrighteous? Harmful desires. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because they are practicing harmful desires. And such are some of you, but... You were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are well 
lawful, but what? And all things are not helpful. Amen. Carriers of harmful desires, ignoring the motive of desire that displeases God. We must be careful. These are individuals that are carriers of harmful desires, ignoring the motive of the desire that displeases God. In Romans chapter 1. Man, I was watching the news, and there was this, uh, I guess on a college campus, there was a kid that had a mega hat on, and this other dude comes up to him and punches the kid right in the face. Thank God I wasn't there. I might have had a manifestation of a harmful desire. <laughs> and everybody just stood around. Like I said, thank God I wasn't there. That will grab the kid right by the throat and started choking him until he repented. Told him, you want to see Jesus? Praise God. But it was pretty sickening that everybody just stood around. It was just this scrawny kid. This other big kid comes up and slams him right in the face. I mean, slams him. I was like, what? And everybody's just standing around. To, of course, the one dude's video on it, you know. It's like, man, nobody did anything. Nobody called the police. Nobody did nothing. Nobody reported him. Nothing. Just stood around. Hallelujah. People walk in fear these days because of political correctness. Romans 1, 18. Hallelujah. Now, for the wrath of God. Now, this is God's wrath <laughs> as a desire. <laughs> it's a harmful desire for mankind. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But it's, it's what mankind brings upon themselves. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may have been known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Ooh. And because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be Christians and wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the incorruptible God unto an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them over up to unclean, uncleanness in the lust, which is what? Desires of their heart. These were, he knew they had harmful desires and he let them go. Go ahead. Why? Because he was going to put them in a position where he was going to release his wrath on them. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, which are called harmful desires. For even their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not Bidding, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, dis 
obedient to parents, undiscerning, unworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. These are really harmful desires. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice, again, practice such things, are deserving of what? Death. Not only do the same, but also what? Approve of those who practice them. So those who approve of harmful desires, hello, will receive the same judgment. Is everybody okay? All that practice lawlessness and evil desires will receive the wrath of God. At some time, no one gets away with it unless they repent. Psalm 37. In verse 1, do not fret because of what? Evildoers, nor be envious. Is envious a desire? Yeah. Nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight. That's a desire, isn't it? Delight yourself also in the presence of the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because there's a heart exchange made in the presence of God. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his ways. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath, do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for this place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Psalm 34. Again, there should always be a desire to get in God's presence. In verse 8. Psalm 34, verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Well, how are you going to taste and see that the Lord is good if you don't get in his presence? Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want. Is want a desire? What's he ask, saying here? There's no harmful desire to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Wow. No lack of any good thing because those who seek, which is a righteous desire, they seek that, to, to seek, to delight, to trust, is a righteous desire. Amen? You will be able to receive. He will bless you. And I'll close at Psalm 23. Is everybody there? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Is fear a desire? It's a harmful one, isn't it? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff shall comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Why is the anointing your head in the presence of a, a table of the enemies? Because it's the anointing and overcomes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
forever and ever. I will not have a harmful desire, but recognize the, mode, the motives and expose and remove all the presence that would try to bring a harmful desire on us. Amen? We see it all over right now. I see many individuals, how many people have backslidden, overdosed? Oh, amen? Think about that. It all started with the presence with one simple harmful desire that opened up to big ones. Amen? You know, the word says a little leaven will leaven the whole lump. So we must be careful and discern. Praise God. Father, we are honored for your word tonight and warning. And we ask that you'll continue to give us the discernment that is needed so we can discern the presence of evil, their motives, their influence, and their harmful desires, whether seen or unseen. Help us not to cooperate or agree with any of them, that we may be well-pleasing to you, desiring righteous desires and your love in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God so you maintain a righteous desire.